It's Friday. We're about to hit up the weekend. We're about to get our party on, which means we got to rank some rookie wide receivers. We got to put them in tiers. We got to talk some ball and have some fun with it as we start our weekend. I'm going to try and do this more often. I don't know if you know this, if you're new to the channel, usually draft season, I kind of film it like a diary, like how I feel with the prospects, how they change. They change from video to video. If that's something you like, you may want to hit subscribe because things are going to change by the week, by the month. As I go through my personal process, how I tweak my personal process, I talk about process and all that stuff. And sometimes I force myself to do things. This year, I'm going to force myself to rank wide receivers, even though I don't feel like there's a change. Also, running backs in other positions. But if even if I don't feel like there's a change, I'm going to throw more players in there and really force myself to think about them. So let's go ahead and look at the tier maker. Let's look at these players real quick. The S tier, the stud tier, you really know what's going to go here. And that's Jackson Smith and Jigba, Quentin Johnston, and Jordan Addison. But we just can't stop there. We got to talk about them a little bit. So the more I flip-flop these players around, the more I look at them. Jackson Smith and Jigba kind of hangs out here at the top. However, I saw a few big mock drafts where he's falling out of the first round. I'm just going to just hold him there unless something happens. I feel like he's going to get good draft capital anyways. We saw what he did during his sophomore season. And really, I feel like he's got upside and a good safety net. When I look at Quentin Johnston, the upside's huge, very hard, and heavy. When I look at Jordan Addison... I don't see the same upside, but I see a higher safety net. So I see these two players personally in my gut like opposite, but I value them very similar. But I kind of chase upside more, especially with this landscape of wide receivers. A wide receiver is a position you can get back really quick. It's deep. Chasing upside is always a good thing, and that's kind of what I plan to do at the position if I'm paying up a little bit. I'll take that prime prospect. Now that I think about it, I can always get mid to mid tier guys throughout the season through random trades. That's an easy thing to do because there's 90 wide receiver twos. You got to think about the whole landscape. You got to think about this whole macro of wide receivers. Going on to our next tiers, another thing you want to think about is some of these wide receivers are going to get drafted higher than you expect. There'll probably be more wide receivers going top 50, top 60, going higher than you expect, and they're really going to cause you to contemplate what to do in your rookie drafts. One thing I really want to know, when I look at the rest of the wide receivers and I think, who could break out and be an alpha? Who could be an alpha? It's Kayshawn Boutte. It's Kayshawn Boutte. He's shown that to us already. He's shown it to us. Really, Prior to his 2022 campaign, prior to the injury, he was up here. He was up here big time. Up here up front. He was in this discussion. He was there. Had the injury. 2022 didn't go so hot. He was inconsistent. Come back from the injury. Change of coaching staff. A lot of weird stuff going on. What if he goes to a situation he likes? Not just a good situation from our perception, but a situation he likes. He fits well. And then... He's farther away from the injuries and really starts to cook. He's more up here. So when it comes to Tira, he's top of it. He's top of that. Just due to the upside, and I chase upside, especially with the wide receiver position due to the macroeconomics of it. Now looking at the wide receivers, really been looking at them and pontificating about them. I'm just going to roll them up here. And you, you kind of would have guessed the re other three or so. They're, you are probably make a case for some others. But Josh Downs and Zay Flowers... These guys kind of go back and forth with each other. I think Zay Flowers is better than like a lot of people let on to be. He measured in kind of low at the bowl game, but I'm not really worried about that. The East-West Shrine game measurements, I'm not worried about that. I, if anything, even if it causes them to slide a few spots in the draft, it'll be a decent discount. It'll be a decent one, a good second-round guy to pivot from whatever tier of running backs you're not liking anymore. Josh Downs is going to be a dependable player. Good market share numbers, good route running, very technical. I don't know if he's going to give you that upside. Jalen Hyatt is scary as fuck, but he is going to be an air yards guy, and he's going to be feast and famine. And the thing about that, it really depends on how you like to play your wide receivers, how you like to deal with that, because... 
he is going to be feast. He's feast of fam. He was like that in college. He was like that last year in his big season. And he projects that way with how he plays. I did the video yesterday. I think some people got the misconception I was making some comps bigger than what they were. But I feel like he is the speed guy in this class that gets the draft capital. I see air yards in his future, but that's volatility. You have to know how to lean into that volatility and play those matchups. If you're good with that in DFS, that might be good for you. If you're not, that might be something you want to stay away I feel like Zay Flowers, more technical, better numbers throughout his whole career. He's got speed, smaller, but that doesn't mean he can't be productive from a fantasy level. I think he's got a good safety net. Out of this whole tier, the guy I really wants, the guy I'm jonesing for, is Kayshawn Boutte. I'm really jonesing for him when I really think about this wide receiver class. Like, honestly, I don't know why I'm not putting him in tier S. I just don't know why. Because when I think about these wide receivers, and this is the thing that I said, like I do a diary here and I start talking because it really changes the process and how I feel about things. Just if you're chasing upside and you look at the macroeconomics at the wide receiver position, and sure, I could draft some good wide receiver twos back in wide receiver ones and so, that would have some good back in wide receiver one years and stuff like that out of some of these drafts. But falling on your face on a guy that has that upside that you know who's been proclaimed as the next big wide receiver like Keishon Boutte. I don't see many people doing that. And again, you got to think fantasy. We're ranking for fantasy. And it's macroeconomics here with 90 wide receiver twos. They flip-flop from a week-to-week -week basis at the NFL level. They'll go missing for three, four, five, six weeks then come back and have a good six weeks. And then you got your upside guys. When you pay capital for those upside guys and they fall on your face... It hurts you really bad inside. But man, when they hit, that, that's a big thing. Kayshawn Boutte, if he hits and he gets draft capital, goes to a spot, he's up there. He's as talented on his up days as any of the guys in the big three. He is. He is. He was very inconsistent, but he was coming back from the injury. Uh, coaching change. A lot of weird stuff going on. I got him here at the top of tier A, but maybe he needs his own tier, like an SA tier. Let's just put him here for aesthetics. Let's just do that. I want you to scratch your head looking at that while I talk throughout the rest of the video. I really want you to do that. I really want to mess with you. So we're going to keep him there. All right? We're going to keep him there. Tier B. So there's a baby brother kind of to Keishon Boutte in this class that has some upside. And it's Rakeem Jarrett. Very athletic, hyper-athletic, five-star recruit. Living off that five-star recruit. But he does have some goods to his game. Because production-wise, some decent market share stats that are on the low end, but tipping the threshold. But also, after the catchability, just getting open with short area quickness. Very gangster up to catch and stuff like that. Played at Maryland. Another thing, low volume passing attack there. So not many opportunities to practice wide receiver. Not many opportunities at that but he's not going to have high draft capital. Might it might surprise us, though, because I expect him to blow up the combine and do very well. I expect him to do very well. I think more people will be talking him up. Very good player. If you've been looking at him from a Debbie lens these last few years, you've been watching Rakeem Jarrett, and he's been a guy that's been fluttering up and down because you don't know what to do with him. Because every now and again, he just pops off with that highlight, and you're like, damn, but the production wasn't there. He's kind of hanging out with B because we got a lot of jabronis in this class, but also it's a very sneaky class because some of these guys got some technical skill that can really, really make an impact in the right situation. Xavier Hutchinson, for instance, very productive. Very productive, big wide receiver, strong at the catch point at the Senior Bowl, showed off some goods. Just a guy to be in the know about. Marvin Mims, productive early in his career. Got to think about Oklahoma has been crazy. It's been crazy these last few years. Up and down, change of coaching, change of quarterbacks multiple times here. Just Oklahoma, he lived through that. He's got the war wounds from that. That impacted his production. There's a way he could win at the NFL level. He's very savvy, good hands, decent ball skills. A lot of people from the draft community, the tape community, loves Rasheed Rice. I get it. I kind of get it. Big guy, mixed plays, all that stuff. Very productive last year. I'm trying to lean into it. I'm having a hard time, but I'm also fighting biases. That's part of my 
process. If I, if I don't like someone in the beginning, I fight the biases throughout the year. It's not like I'm going to jack them up the ranks or anything, but I look into them a little more. Cedric Tillman, good 2021 20, season. Only played six games this year. He's really got some goods to his game, but really want to see him step it up. Really want to see what he does in draft season. Really want to see where he goes in the draft. Really want to see something out of him. Really interesting draft for him. He could go higher than expected. He could also tumble as well. This rookie class at the wide receiver level is very interesting. Tier C, we have a bunch of guys I've thrown in from the Senior Bowl. And there's going to be more guys thrown into Tier C, more guys thrown into Tier B-ish range. As I keep adding throughout the weeks, I want to take it a little bit at a time and really as like a little overview slash rankings tier of these players. Because if I do too much, if I throw in too much, then I feel like things will get diluted down. And as I keep going over these players, kind of like how I did that thought process with Kayton Boutte, Kayshawn Boutte, as I've been talking with these players... Just things will just come together slowly and surely. And that's just how it works. You want to take your time with these players as I am. I'm working on some more metrics and stuff and spreadsheets where it's probably really going to change these players around a lot for me, at least on this back half end. The top end's kind of like settled there, but it kind of shifts a little bit. But let's go ahead and add some of these senior bull guys. So Dontavian Wicks has been a guy I've been looking at all off season long. I haven't talked about him much, but his athleticism and size, ball skills, him at Virginia, just from what I've seen over the years. Been a guy I've been paying attention to for more than just this draft season, honestly. Michael Wilson had a good showing at the Senior Bowl. Really made some money this week. Had some big catches in the game. Had some big catches in practices. Need to finish on some of his catches and some of his routes. I showed that on some of the videos. If you want to check that out, Puka Nakua had some good days as well. And a guy and people don't are not talking about that much. Trey Palmer, someone brought him up in one of the comment sections, and I said I was going to get to him soon. This ain't it, but I do want to say that in some of my spreadsheets, he's starting to shine a little bit. Yards per team pass attempt, some of the market share figures doing well. Then Parker Washington is back into the mix. He was from last times rankings and when someone makes the rankings i don't take them out i just fluctuate them in the rankings and it's not like i hate them or anything it can be here or there i really want to see the draft capital i think things are getting a little bit murky here i think he's got some goods but after you get past tier a it's not bad there's some guys here that can do some things it's just not very top heavy it's not very exciting but you do have some talent here that you look at you know what? You don't have no five tool players, but you have some guys that excel at one thing or another, either by ball skill, size, short area quickness, route running, you know, some good pedigrees. You got a little bit of everything here. Right situation, right coach, right day, right time, you might catch something. And then also, when I look at tier A um, with Downs, Flowers, and Hyatt's. Especially with Flowers and Downs, I think Hyatt's going to go a little bit higher in rookie drafts due to potential draft capital that might not even be there. But Zay Flowers, you might be able to catch at a value second round of rookie drafts once those running backs start to peel back. Same thing with Josh Downs. Those two could be value plays. And here, really, when I look at these wide receivers, really want to look at the draft, really want to look at the draft capital. Honestly, they're all kind of meshed together, and I'm going to pick my spots from there. I'm going to be picking my spots on these players due to this running back class. Honestly, the whole strategy was to build the wide receiver unit last year with last year's rookie class, come back this year and build up the running back class. We've been doing this, talking this over on this channel for months years we've been strategizing that's part of the strategy and i'm not leaning away from that macro standpoint it tells you to lean into the running back position and also look at the wide receivers and then go in the micro and peg your values overall running backs take the values of wide receivers tight ends deeper in what you think so you can catch some of those later at a discount as well very decent rookie draft class quarterbacks Kind of strange, but you got some value. Let's call it strange. Some people call it bad. Some people say better than expected. Let's just call it strange. 
Quarterback's kind of okay, strange. It's not too bad. So overall, we got some goods in this class. I've seen some people on Twitter saying, hey, this is a bad running back class, bad wide receiver class. Honestly, this running back class, with it being so good, I, I think it's a tremendous running back class. You got a little bit of everything. It honestly makes this weird wide receiver class a little better because you can mine some values and you don't have to take some of these guys at the cost you catch them at a little bit of a discount which is something you can hammer home but let me know your thoughts in the comments below i want to hear about it make sure you subscribe on the way out i'm going to get you ready for your rookie drafts the nfl season the nfl draft and everything else i want to thank you for watching catch you on the next video